Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the DAP Analysis Visual. Now, this visual, as you might guess, is used for analyzing gap analysis, so analyzing the gap between different groupings of data that you have. So one of the common ways you see this sometimes used is for survey data or maybe marketing data. In the case of marketing data, maybe you want to validate when you're doing some testing of an email blast, which one of your tests works. So if you're not really familiar with A-B testing, for example, it's the idea of emailing two different sets of customers, basically the same idea of an email with some variation between the two, and you want to see which one is more successful. So maybe whenever you had a subject line that was titled, come by now, versus a subject line that's titled, look at our great features, you want to be able to see if, you know, what, what kind of response you get with one of those tests versus the other test. The content of the email may be exactly the same, but you've done two different subject lines, and then you might be able to analyze that through some kind of a gap analysis visual like we have here. So it's great for being able to test things like A-B testing like I gave a scenario there. It also has a lot of customizations to it. This is actually a great visual if there's a lot of things that you want to change with the way that the visual appears. You have a lot of abilities to change it through the format paintbrush that we're going to look at here in a few moments. All right, so this one's designed by All About Data. Let's go ahead and take a look and walk you through how to create this visual. First of all, download it, and then how to import it and start using it. All right, so our first stop here is to go to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, you'll find the gallery, and you'll scroll down until you find the Gap Analysis Visual. Gap Analysis Visual is right here, so I would select this visual and go ahead and download it. And you can also download the samples if you want to see some examples of how to use it. All right, so I've already downloaded the visual, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to work my way over to the Power BI, cust uh, Power BI Designer, Power BI Desktop Tool, and we'll walk you through how you can actually do this on your own. Now, the data set that we're going to use for this example is going to be all around kind of retail sales. So we're going to start by going ahead and pulling in that data. So I'll go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel. Once we go here, we'll select Retail Sales that has in it the data that we're going to use for this example. So I'll select Retail Sales and hit Open. With that selected, then you'll see the different spreadsheets that we have inside of this workbook. We have one here called This Year versus Last Year that we're going to use for this example. And we're going to use this gap analysis visual to be able to compare this year's sales to last year's sales and see if we're beating this year's sales or if we're losing the last year's sales and by how much. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit load down here at the bottom, and that'll bring this into the Power BI desktop, the data that is. And you can see that data now appears here on the right-hand side. And so we're ready now to bring the custom visual in that we want to use for this. Now, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and visualize some of the data here. So to visualize some of this data, I'm going to show this into a regular table here. We'll bring in the category, the subcategory, how about the year, the quantity, and the revenue as well. And I'll bring this into a nice little table here. And we'll increase the text size of this, make it a little larger to see. And we're doing this mainly so we can kind of validate and show you that there's some cross-filtering that applies in this visual. But I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'll move this down to the bottom. And we're going to apply a filter on it as well. So I'm going to go down to the filter section here for this visual. And I'm going to filter it to only show this year's data. Okay, so we're only seeing this year's data in this table. And I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to paste it right next to it, like so. And then I'm going to change the filter on this one to show last year's data. So we're going to show last year instead of this year here. Kind of the same idea here, kind of visualized a little bit differently, just showing you this in table format. And then as we start to bring this data into the gap analysis, we can kind of look at this to validate the data as well. All right, so we're now ready to go ahead and import the custom visual. So we'll do that by going over to the ellipses on the right-hand side and select to import a custom visual. We'll go ahead and hit import here and then go find wherever we downloaded the custom visual that we're using for this example. So I'm going to go ahead and find the gap analysis visual, hit open, and hit OK. And we now have the gap analysis item here to use in the visualizations pane. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and we're going to make it a little larger so we can actually see it pretty well as we're doing our example here. All right, and so we'll start to bring in some data in here. So you'll see that we have several fields here on the right-hand side. We have the statement, okay? We have groups to compare. We have the values, which is our actual measure. You have some extra details that you can throw in to see some extra information. And then you also have a sort by field that you can use here. So for this case, what we'd want to see is the statement is what we're going to see on the left-hand side going down. So these are going to be kind of our categorical data that we're going to bring in. And in this case, I have a category field. Okay, so we drop that in here underneath the statement. We're then going to bring in the year as what we're going to use to compare. And you can see the year is going to be either this year or last year. Okay. So not quite the A-B testing I talked about in the example earlier, but this will work as well. And then we're going to bring in revenue for our values. Okay, and we're starting to see this kind of build out a little bit. And then if we wanted to, we can drop some things underneath the extra data section. We can also talk about how we can sort by, uh, do sort by feature here. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. But let's look at what we have here initially. 
Now you'll notice here as you select items from the gap analysis, so if I select electronics here, for example, as I choose that gap analysis bar, you can look below and you can see it's automatically filtering here. It's filtering to just show electronics, so it does appear to be working. There's also some other things that you can do. So for example, if you hover above the, the circles that you see here, you can see it's going to highlight which item you're looking at. So when I highlight above the white circle, it's highlighting up here. It shows that that's for last year. If I highlight the darker circle, it shows that that's for this year. And you'll also point out here, if you look in this area, when you hover on a circle, it shows you something in this focus area. Anytime you hover above a circle, you'll, show, you'll see that it shows you the revenue up in that top area as well. So that's if for some reason you had turned off the labels here, for example. Maybe you turn off the labels, they'll still show up here for you if you'd like. The other thing that we can do if in this top area is you can add extra items. There's one extra field that you can add, and it's this extra detail section. Inside this extra detail section, if I drag in something like the quantity, anytime I hover above a circle now, you'll notice that it not only shows the revenue, but it also shows the quantity for that uh, particular circle as well. So that's being shown up top here, where it says hover on a circle to see this focused area. You're seeing that it's also showing you the quantity as well as the revenue now because we added something to the extra detail section. Now, if you want to control the sorting of the statements, or the sorting of the categories here, here's how you can do that. You can drop another visual, or I should say another field, another metric field, inside this sort statement by field. So for example, if I want to sort by revenue, I can drag and drop the revenue down into the sort statement. And you can see it kind of resorts those for me. So you can kind of play around with those depending on how you want to resort the data. You can come in here and you can actually modify the sort order by dropping in the fields underneath the sort statements by. All right, let's talk about the visual itself now and how we can change the visual appearance of it. And you can do that, of course, underneath the format paintbrush. If I go underneath the format paintbrush here, you'll find there's quite a few items here as far as how you can customize this visual. So you won't really be too limited with what you can do to change this. The first thing we're going to look here is the statement section. Inside the statement section, this is where you can actually change the text color, the text font of the items that you see on the left hand side. So electronics, jewelry, clothing, that can be either increased here so I can increase the text size and you can also change the colors. If I wanted to, I could change it to more of a pure black so it's a little easier to read. That's what's underneath the statement section. Underneath the statement sort, this is where you can actually change the sort order. Remember we dropped a field in the sort order? Well, we can tell it that we actually want to sort it ascending instead of descending and it just kind of resorts it to an ascending view by revenue instead of a descending view by revenue. So the default there was descending. So that's what the sort statement does, or the statement sort does for you. Underneath the group circle, you'll find that you can actually change the color of the circle. So you have the hollowed out version of the circle and then the filled in version of the circle. You can change the color of that circle here. I can change it to yellow, for example, and it allows you to actually see that change immediately. That's underneath the group circle section. Right below that, you have group circle data label. And if we expand that, you'll see here that we can actually turn off the labels if we wanted to. So the labels now are, uh, have disappeared. Uh, probably makes sense to go ahead and keep those on. You can also change the color of this label, so it's kind of that off gray. If you want to make it more of a pure black, so it's a little easier to read, you can do that. And I might suggest you also increase the text size there. So maybe we increase the text size to 14 to make it a little easier to actually read those labels. So that's the group data, group circle data labels here. You can turn them off, turn them on, or you can change the color and the text size. Next to here, you have the group legend. Underneath the group legend, this has to do with the top section here. So I can increase the view of the size of the group legend to maybe the 16 point font. And then you can also increase the radius of the circles that you see here up in the legend section. So if I want to, I can increase the radius here to something like maybe 13 or 14. Let's make it 13. Oop, not 400. There we go. Oop. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. So the default there is 8, so it's kind of pushing it into an 813. There we go. So I've made it 13 now. You can see when you make it 13, it kind of visualizes that circle a little bit larger up in the, the legend section. Next, you have the details on hover. That's the section that you have right here. You can increase or decrease the font size in that label section. If I go underneath the details on hover, and I can increase the font size there, let's make it up to about 14 fonts. So it's a little easier to see now whenever I hover above these circles, that area up here is a little bit larger. All right, next we'll go down to the gap bar. So if I go down the gap bar, you can, you can see here you can change the color of the gap bars here. So for example, maybe I don't want this to be this off blue. I want it to be more of an orange color. You can do that. You can also, though, you'll notice here there's this color by statement option here. That's the one on the bottom. If I turn that on, notice what happens. It automatically sets a new independent color to each of the gap bars based on the new individual statements that we have. So the statements being the categories that we have. You can also increase the height or the size the, that you have of each of the bars by bumping up the, this from 16. Maybe you want to be a more like a 40%. You can kind of bump that size up there if you'd like and make it a little easier to read as well. 
Then moving down a little bit farther, you have the gap label, which is the label that you have inside of the gap bar. And if we in open up that uh, section here, you can change where the label is positioned. So by default, it's going to be set to auto, which means it's going to try and fit it into the bar. But if it's too large of a number, then it'll go below the bar like you see here. Clothing shows up below the bar, but the label for jewelry actually shows up on the bar. That's because it's a set to auto. If I change this from auto to below, it automatically puts everything below. But I kind of like the auto option. I'll leave auto on. And what auto does is it automatically chooses whether or not to put it on the bar or below the bar based on the size of the text or how long the text is. You can also change the color. So if I wanted to, I can change the color of that label. Um, I'm not so concerned about the color. You'll notice that when it's below the bar, it shows up as blue. When it's on the bar, it shows up as white. You could change that here with these two options. And then lastly, you can go ahead and change the text size. I can bump up the text size here to match the text size we have everywhere else. And I can make it a 14 point font so it's a lot easier to read. All right, so that's pretty much it. Everything else that you'll see here below is going to be items that you have in every one of the custom visuals where you can adjust the title. Maybe I want to turn the title off for this example because it's kind of clear on what we're seeing here. I could also do something like maybe change the background if I wanted to. I can turn on a background color and then adjust the color here if I wanted to. Uh, I don't think that really makes sense for this one, but just point out you can do that. And then you can also do things like put a border around it if you wanted to. All right, so that's it for this custom visual this week. Hope you guys enjoyed this module and look forward to showing you our next one.